Pete, it's such a pleasure to have you here. It's great to be here. Busy Thanks time at D23. Yes, you could say that. Yes. So first of all, let's talk about the things that you can talk about and new announcements. Yeah, we yeah. have a lot that we are announcing right here at D23, starting with our next film, which is Elio. That's been yeah. kind of known, but it's a little bit known. Yeah. It's uh, about a kid who longs to be abducted by aliens, you know, the way you do. Uh, it's really charming. And I think a little bit like, you know, Inside Out 2 seems to have really stuck, struck a chord because people can identify with anxiety. This one, I think, really does a similar thing in loneliness, that a lot of times we feel like we're surrounded by people. Why do I feel like I'm all out there ha hanging out by myself? This film really speaks to that in a, in a, a sort of cathartic way, which I, uh, is going to be really beautiful. And then, sorry, get stuck on the uh, Hoppers. Hoppers is one that we've not talked about. It's the film that comes out after that. So let's see, what are we? That'll be 25, early 25. And it's about uh, a passionate young woman who loves animals and through some technology is able to hop her brain into a little robot beaver and go see the world from animals perspective and get clued into what they're actually talking about and plotting and so how in the, like because i'm sure you get pitched a million ideas you know you were all you know everybody at pixar how do you decide well pretty much what we do is we tap people that we believe in and that's where we start so instead of being like we love this idea and then you make it it's more like, hey, Daniel Chong, you're an amazing filmmaker. Go come up with a couple ideas and we'll see if any of them hit. And this one really felt fun and it's hilarious. He has a great sense of humor. So I think people are going to love this one. Oh, my God. Super exciting. Well, I also have to say congratulations on the success of Inside Out, too. Thank you very much. Um, the anxiety character, did you kind of know that was going to be a runaway hit? Yeah, well, I mean, not to this degree. Who, yeah. who knew? Uh, obviously, the film... The world of Inside Out allows you to kind of zip in there and go like, what's going on with our emotions? Why are we feeling this? And and what's the real purpose of some of these emotions? Anger, fear, why would we want to experience these things? Anxiety was one that, I mean, it's been going around uh, for quite a while and it seems to have gotten worse uh, recently. So it did feel like this is probably something that will speak to people, but again, who, who knew? I mean, we're the number one animated film of all time. Of all time. I mean, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And such a short amount of time. Too. Yeah. Eight weeks we've been out. Yeah. What sort of feedback do you get from people on the street? Not necessarily within Pixar, but people... People like that I know that have not gone to our last films at all have told me, I've been twice and I love X, Y, and Z about it. So it's, it really seems to have hit something. As a creative officer of Pixar, which are the emotions do you most experience in one day at uh, work. I would love to say joy, but it's probably more anxiety. <laughs> anxiety? Yeah. No anger? Not anger? <laughs> no, not, I'm not really an anger guy, despite the fact I actually do the voice for dad's anger. When you zip in yes. dad's head, that's that's me. <laughs> um, so Toy Story 5, what can you tell me about Toy Story 5? Toy Story 5. Okay, so one thing we've been ignoring in the Toy Story 1s through 4 is a reality that Guess what? Kids are more and more into video games and phones and technology. And so we're really, that's what Woody and the gang are up against. And this one is toys and tech. Wow. Anything else you can tell me about yes. the cast or? Well, it's uh, uh, one thing that we've just announced today is that it's being written and directed by Andrew Stanton, who directed Finding Nemo and Dory and Wally. He's an amazing writer. He's written on all the other four. So. To have him back at the helm along with uh, Kenna Harris, those two are a killer team. How, because I've always wondered, like, could there be another Nemo or, you know, how do you decide the, on the sequels? What gets sequels and what doesn't? I'm waiting for Ratatouille 2. I told you before, yeah, yeah. it's my favorite. So. I mean, it's a combo because, of course, we're making these for the audience, yeah. not for ourselves. So you want to know that they'll be re well received. And then we do have kind of a guideline and guardrail, I don't know, whatever you call it, where... If we get a certain way in and we're like, this just isn't feeling like it's about something new and right. substantive, then then we'll cut bait. Right. So, you know, we, it, it's imperative for us that we find something that feels like, oh, this is furthering the story. I'm talking about something uh, that we didn't explore in the first one, something deeper about the human condition or, you know, our, or our own experiences in life. So in the case of Toy Story 5, um, what was sort of the moment that you said, yeah, we're going to do this again. Because so many people have said all along, oh, you're good. Don't stop there. Just oh, stop I know. There. They and said that after keep... three. Right. Right. 
because the first three wrap up so nicely in a little trilogy. But the way Andrew has been approaching it is almost more like uh, what I read about. I've never worked in television, but people will say, oh, we, we only wrote up to uh, the end of season one. And now we're going again. What do we do? Well, we learn from what we planted and then extrapolate from there. And so this, the cool thing about the way he's been approaching it is it's, it's not like we've been plotting this all along and we're going to arrive here. It's more like it's a discovery for us as well. And I hope that translates into a, a fun ride for the audience. So inside, people, of course, now are saying, like, we want Inside Out 3. Oh, yeah. They want it right away. And you took a while, and yeah. you al it allowed you to have Riley go from a child to an adolescent. Are you going to wait till she's an adult now, uh -huh. or do you think there's a plan in between? Well, okay, so after Toy Story 1, we've, we were just trying to finish that movie. We weren't thinking about anything else. Uh, then after it came out, I was surprised two, three years later, people were still talking about it. So... Uh, we started hunting around, and then, yeah, I think it's been nine years uh, since the first one came out because we needed about four to actually do it. I think we're now at the same place as we were after one where we're just like, okay, well, if we were going to do something, what would it be? And we're kind of just thinking of ideas. Okay, so yeah. you're saying there's a chance. But you never, like, if we don't find something, <laughs> right. then, I don't know, I, I, there's got to be some. Well, who knows? Who knows? Would you, like to, would you like to see, I mean, is it something that you, do you have certain ones that you're like, let's, you know, you push a little harder and you really want to see it come to fruition or, or does it have to be organic? It kind of has, I mean, there's a few that I've been pushing for that we've tried and tried and just haven't cracked. Um, this one, I, you know, from the beginning on the first one, which I uh, directed, I was like, I would love for it to feel as though out of this vast world, we only saw like 3% and the rest of it's still out there. And so there's a lot to explore, a lot of stuff that we played with in the first movie or the second movie that didn't work for story reasons. It didn't fit thematically. So we have a lot to play with. Hey, yeah, you have fun. another big announcement. Incredibles 3. Yes. Did he just say incredible? <laughs> which is an incredible announcement because I absolutely love, 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 love this family. Cool. Um, so what can you tell me about where we're going to pick up with this family? I'm so glad that Brad Bird is back. Like, it's just, yeah. is, he, is he kind of the guy that you have to wait till he's ready or, or what happens with that dynamic? Brad is an amazing collaborator. He's, he is so fiery and passionate. Um, but yeah, you kind of have to, he's, he's a guy and different people work different ways. He's a guy who needs a little more time to like build up the steam to get like the, the passion and the power going. And I think we're at that point now. Um, we're not really sharing any details because it's yeah. still pretty malleable in terms of what the story is actually about. Really? Yeah. So it's really at the beginning stages. It it's is kind of like early. we've agreed that we're all going to go there. Does he have I like does he sort oh, yeah. of know where he does? Yeah. He yeah. knows where it's going. I don't think I guess I'm still learning how Brad works. I'm not sure he has plot. I don't think so. I think it's more like this is what I'm interested in talking about. That's the great thing about Brad's films is, you know, when you when you look at Ratatouille on one level, it's a fun romp about a rat who wants to cook. But really, when you dig deeper, it's about like, what does it take to do that? The passion versus opportunity. Like he's always got these deeper sociological ideas. And uh, and so I think that's kind of where we're starting from. Is there another um Pixar project or a Pixar film that hasn't had a sequel that you'd like to see a sequel to? There's a number, but like I say, um, some of them we've been trying and haven't had any luck. So who knows? It, sometimes it's just, hey, we got the wrong combo of people. Uh, or other times, you know, not all characters are... Woody has so many levels to him. He just seems very giving. Uh, and not all characters are like that. So I have a question about uh, a young you who had a flip book. Yeah. Do you still have the flip book? So for people who don't know, maybe just tell the story of it and sort of the origins of you as an animator in a sense. And do you still have it? I, uh, as a kid, I think I bought some book and in the top corner you flip through and there's a little bit of movement. And I was like, what? My brain kind of scrambled because it looked like it was moving. So I started making my own and uh, my mom saved them with this big jar full of flip books that I made as a kid. And I still do. I make, um, I've done this for almost 30 years now, uh, flip books for our family greeting cards, which is fun. And do you still have the ones from when you were a kid? Yeah. 
You do. Yeah. They are bizarre and don't make any sense, but they move. So that was all that mattered back then. <laughs> and now you've been at Pixar for 30 years. Yeah. Where do you see it going? 34 actually coming up. Where do you see Pixar going in the future? I think Pixar is really a reflection of the people. When I think of Pixar, I think of our filmmakers because it's really always been driven by artists. And uh, we do try to make film for audiences, obviously, but um, it's point of origin. The spark of the idea has come from people, very unique people who have interesting, unique ways of looking at the world. And um, we have a combo, a really good combo right now of new and experienced directors, people like Andrew, kind of holding down the fort that are able to speak from a great place of wisdom and experience. And then some brand new people who are just so alive and firing and coming at things from a totally new perspective. So that's always been our goal is to find that balance. And you're going to keep being the chief creative officer or, or I mean, I know you were sort of reluctant to take that role in the first place, yeah. but is that something that you're thriving in? And well, uh, I'm doing my best. How's that? I don't know if thriving is, <laughs> is always the way I would describe it, but it's tough. It's a tough yeah. role. It's not what anything I learned at cartoon school. And uh, so I'm doing my best. Well, you're doing pretty well, sir. Thank you very much for coming in. And congratulations again on Inside Out, too. That's just a, a remarkable feat. And cool. Thank you. And yeah, thanks again.